I asked him why one day. Why do you always, why are you perfect every day? Why do you have to be? And it was the neatest answer in the world. He said, Roger, I never want to walk into like a big box store or a restaurant with my family and have somebody walk up and say, hey, you did me wrong. Tradesmen built America. Not policymakers or desk jockeys, but hardworking, blue collared men and women. Join me, Roger Wakefield, on conversations with some of the nation's most successful skilled laborers. This is the Trade Talks. Are you glad that you picked plumbing as a career? Absolutely, Roger. Um, I did a lot of things before plumbing, of course. Kind of went through uh, the high school, um, did the usual route of going to college, um, went to Arizona State, had good grades, did very well in college, actually. Um, it's usually not the story for people, like they did bad and they kind of had to go somewhere else. But the whole time I did pretty good, like 3.5 to 4.0. My problem was I couldn't find what I liked. I jumped school to school to school over the span of two to three years. Started off as an exploratory kind of thing because I didn't know what I wanted to do. So went to business school, kind of stuck as a core with that, but then went to engineering, found out I was not good with numbers, <laughs> as most blowers are. Um, some are better than others, but uh, me, I'm not a math guy. So that turned out out of the gate real quick. I started getting to sustainability a little bit, and I like that a lot. It's uh, huge, uh, I'll, and I want to talk about that. Yeah, uh, sustainability, super cool. But I was getting to a point where we were doing this research, and I was doing these papers about Europe and Asia and other places on what they were doing. But when you get into the deep root of it, like policy making, and it gets uh, kind of like a bummer because like it's really hard to make those changes and so at the end of that I kind of grew money hungry and then left college went to Lubbock Texas where my family was uh, met my now wife there but started uh, remodeling got in with a real estate guy he would buy houses and I would basically hire subs or I would do the work myself and do a quick flip very little plumbing work I pretty much didn't do any of the plumbing work I was the painter and sander at the time made some really good money but wasn't happy. I hated it. Couldn't find my niche. Um, so kind of hit low spots, kind of lost it all in Lubbock. My wife graduated Texas Tech and I followed her here, to Dallas. <laughs> she probably looked more likely. Yeah, no, guns up. I know, no, I get it. I, mean, I get <laughs> my it. My whole family. I get up. it. Oh, no, I get it. That was I, the sheep. I had I, to go. Okay, so just so you know, I've, I've got tickets to the Texas oh. Tech, Texas and Tech okay. game Very nice. in Austin next week. Okay, uh, uh, cool. Got a, a week from yesterday. Very cool. I think. Uh, the day after Thanksgiving. See, yeah. I'm, I don't fall off that closely. I try to every year, okay. and then I just. Well, that's because Tech loses a lot. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That's not <laughs> that loud. <laughs> you did. <laughs> you know. Um, Arizona State does too. So we're pretty. We're. Uh, what's cool about Arizona State, though, they moved to the Big 12. So now we became a house of rivalries. You bet. But getting back, started working at the city of Wiley. At the water department, learned I hated city work. Did not like it. Uh, There's sat in politics the involved there. I just got just got to tell you. Yeah, a little politics. Oh, but yeah. We didn't work a lot. I was a busy bee at the water department where I worked at City of Wiley. We didn't have a lot of breaks. Um, we had some fire hydrants every now and again. Um, but so, what did you do most of your days there? That in the truck and painted fire hydrants. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> not much. Um, we did a couple. Fire hydrants, like I said, some main break. I was there for six months. Got were you, promoted. Were you bored most days? Oh, yeah. I was super bored. I was That's there, tough I'm, living. It is. Uh, super bored eight, three times in my eight hours because there's just nothing to do. I gained like 20 pounds. But with that said, um, my wife had a friend whose husband was a plumber. And he brought me to Levy and Son. And then that's when I met Dustin. And then from there, man, it's my life has changed. Or the better, for sure. Okay. And the Dustin you're talking about is Dustin DeWeese. I've oh, had yeah. him on 100%. before. Great interview. Yes. And a fantastic plumber. I, I love Dustin's mindset. Awesome plumber. Uh, awesome plumber. Awesome teacher. Uh, me and Oscar Trejo were yeah. talking about this the other day. Um, we've had some apprentices and plumbers, and we were kind of talking between me and him. And 
were losing the craftsmanship almost a Absolutely. little Absolutely. And we were kind of talking like, were we just trained at such a higher level than everyone else? We were trying to figure out what is kind of happening because we're just talk callbacks, stuff like that. And, and I love that because I go back to the plumber that I give credit to training me mm -hmm. is a guy named Austin. Austin okay. Speak. Yes. Austin taught me you do everything right every single day. Mm -hmm. and, and I mentioned this in, the, in the, another podcast the other day. I asked him why one day. Why do you always, why are you perfect every day? Why do you have to be? And it was the neatest answer in the world. He said, Roger, I never want to walk into like a big box store or a restaurant with my family and have somebody walk up and say, hey, you did me wrong. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow. Yeah, it's a cool feeling. It, it is to, to, know, feeling. to know that, look, I, I take so much pride in everything I do. Each of, and look, there's not a lot of people that are trained like that. No, no. It's few and far between. And I didn't realize that at the time. Um, and it took, I mean, I'm pretty new to the trades, uh, four years, a uh, year and a half on a truck, almost two years now. Okay. I've been pretty new. I haven't, since I've been at Rescue Air, I've kind of grew in that company. And so I've kind of taken almost a leadership role in this, uh, in the plumbing department, but I never realized like the mistakes and this, this little things that Dustin has taught us that make the world. And it's crazy to think. And, and people just aren't trained that way. Such a difference in that. It is. It is. So take just a second. Tell everybody who you are and, and, and what you do. Yeah. So my name is Tyler Hoskins. Um, I'm a tradesman plumber over at Rescue Air and Plumbing. Um, and I fix people's problems. Um, I have my specialty is leak detection underneath slabs, which is your field and specialty. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Uh, Dustin was the one and watching your videos over my apprenticeship. And that's what I love to do. And I've actually got to go out on jobs with you yeah, and do leak detection. Yeah, so, so you've got to see me because because this, we, man, we got called to a really unique job. A very unique job. Have you ever <laughs> seen a water feature in somebody's house like that? No, not with a, what, six foot concrete circular pier around it yeah it's huge yeah no no i gotta admit i didn't climb underneath and look at it like <laughs> you did it was pretty tight on that say yeah, at least it, it, a couple of barriers that we were gonna have to tunnel under uh -huh. underneath the house even just to take a peek at what it even looked like yeah I, I need to call mr Heisman and just say hey do you still have any problems with that because <laughs> man we tried a couple of different things and man it's like every time we go in and test something it's like call back and say oh my god it fixed it yeah it's fixed. well wait we didn't do anything to fix it so anyway i need to give him a call he's a neat guy yeah he is super neat and he i think he would let us know if it was leaking but i think he would too. He, he, i think he would call me personally and say hey just gonna let you know yeah it's still leaking. i've been checking he's got that ruler he's like oh no i know that guy's phenomenal that's awesome so so let's go back you, you, you tried a couple of different jobs first of all you went to college when you walked in college, did you know what you wanted to be when you grew up, or did you have any idea? No, no idea. When I left high school, I kind of wanted to be a mechanic, a diesel mechanic. Um, kind of got that shunned down by uh, my father figure, and so I just got pushed towards that college. I was just there. I knew I had to get good grades. I was on scholarship, which was awesome because I had good grades in high school. So I had full ride. Also, you were really one of them smart freaking kids in high school. <laughs> no, I played the system in high school. So. I was going to say, how'd you get scholarships? Because, man, look, <laughs> no, I was nowhere no, near no, scholarships. No, no, so. Matter of fact, the college just sent letters to my, my high school, said so we'll pay him not to come to school. <laughs> no, uh, so we had two high school. I, I grew up in Roswell, New Mexico. Okay. Of all places. So we have there two, you go. Yeah, two been hanging out at Area 51. Yeah, no, I know, I know like, why yeah, you're the way you are. Yeah. Absolutely. I love uh, it. So there's one school and school two. School one had all the smarter kids. I was pretty intelligent, but I was maybe 150 out of four or 500 kids. Um, oh, you were way above me, Hodder. <laughs> the other school, though, I, if I transferred, I was number two in my class. Dude. So I transferred, and that made my application looked great and Absolutely. I submitted it all over and I just got scholarships. I got um, a full ride to Arizona State. Got, um, my mom helped me out with my books and stuff that I didn't get paid for, but majority of it was paid for. 
So I figured if I have the opportunity, why not take it? So did they ask you anywhere in, in the interview process, what do you want to come to school for? What do you want to be when you grow up? Well, no, not it's at like, all. Come on, give us your money, yeah. whatever, whatever, whatever isn't covered in scholarship. Yeah. Give us the rest of your money. Yeah, I mean, they have a whole program called the Exploratory Program because they don't even know what, like, oh, what it's... Up? <laughs> Ah, oh, trying to like say eight it. Different classes. You knew like one's business related, one's engineering, one's architecture, and you kind of get thrown in there and see what you like. And Pay us a few grand, and we'll help you figure out what you might want to yeah. be when you grow up. Yeah, hundred percent. If it's arts, that? and uh, well, that kind of sucks, but we'll lead you to the arts degree. But there when you you're go. finished, you're done. And maybe what you love, but they're not going to tell you what you're going to do after this, right? I'll never regret going. But I wish I would have known more. Um, instead of just go there, you'll be successful. But it doesn't matter. You just go and you'll be fine. And that's not the case. So, so once you got out of college, you tried a few other things. Mm -hmm. What did you try? Um, I worked for my grandfather a little bit. Um, he owned a shredding company. So what he did, he owned big trucks and he'd go to hospitals, bank, people's confidential information. Mm -hmm. And in the truck was a giant shredder. You shred it, recycle it. And that was his business. So I did truck driving for a little bit. Um, then I kind of got into fleet management. From there, he sold the company. So then I kind of lost my job. <laughs> it wasn't the greatest. What, they didn't want to keep you around? No, they didn't want to keep old Tyler out. Old Tyler uh, had some problems, and I wasn't the best employee. Okay, so what kind of problems? What, what, what? And I asked because, look, mm -hmm. when my son came to, came to me and says, Dad, I want to get in the union, mm -hmm. I said, no, you don't. Yeah. Go get a job. You're going to screw up. You're going to make mistakes. Make them before you get out of the union because I don't want you to ruin your reputation in the union just from first walking in. Yeah. What kind of mistakes were you making? So I was saying I was being a 20, 21, 22 year old. Oh, I dude, staying... I can already tell you the mistakes you make because I did them too. <laughs> yeah, I was staying up till one, two o'clock in the morning. I had to go pick up my truck to drive at five because I had a four hour route. Tyler sometimes didn't make that mm -hmm. five o'clock, and Tyler sometimes didn't wash his clothes the night before, so he had no clothes. And yeah, Tyler. yeah. So, um, so I used to brag the fact that I could stay out till three in the morning because you know the bar closes at two. Mm -hmm. You might end up somewhere else for thirty minutes to an hour. I know it was, yeah. could happen. It does happen. And I, I could, I could go home, go to sleep then, and be at work by six or seven o'clock, mm -hmm. like this. But I, but I still showed up. I, I could be at work on time every time. See, I was, I was bad. I was bad. Okay. You're younger. I'll, I'll give you that. I was bad. I was, uh, most of the days were, I was, I was on time, but crawling in on time. Yeah. I got better um, too. But a lot of times it was, I wouldn't, sh I wouldn't wake up till nine or 10 o'clock and it's called a day of watch. So, Ooh. yeah. But luckily I had my grandfather there. So he was like, I know forgiving. Yeah. Uh, was, well, apparently so. You kept your freaking job. Yeah, I kept my job for a little okay. bit. Uh, he had to switch me roles a couple of times. He's like, maybe <laughs> truck driver is not for you. Let's put you in the office. I, so yeah. you can start at eight. <laughs> yeah. Or, or maybe let's have you, I don't know, carry out the trash office where you start at nine. <laughs> yeah. You know, I get maybe that. You know, like a 12 to five. I like, you. there you go. That's your kind of job yeah. right there. From there, got into construction. Lost my job. Got in touch with this realtor from my grandfather's job. And he flipped houses. He's like, you ever thought about going to construction? I need this house painted. I need this done. I'm like, eh, I can figure it out. It's painting. And so that just turned into two houses, three houses, five. And we were doing, at the time, about 20 houses a month. Wow. We were making really good money. Um, but again, kind of threw it all down the drain. Hit low times again, started drinking a lot. That got bad. And so I lost everything, lost it all, lost my house, uh, the business, tools, truck eventually. Um, so moved down here with nothing, essentially. Had, uh, I had the time I had my truck, so brought my truck down here with all my stuff loaded into it. Moved to my wife's little studio, 200 square feet. Part hairstylist. Me and her can yeah. have great conversations too. Yeah. Because I, I used to be a hairstylist. From there, uh, just figure things out until I got into plumbing. Like I said, went to Wiley and then plumbing. And then even then as an apprentice, I was still not doing the best, not doing everything I can, right? Not doing the trainings I was provided, not 
taking everything Dustin was giving me at the time. I was taking everything for granted. And so after my apprenticeship, I went to a company and they treated me really bad for the first five or six months. Um, I sat in my truck for most of the day, just hoping, because I'm commissioned. So I would sit in a truck five days a week, just sit, just hoping for a call. And living like that's hard. And so when I went, came to Rescue Air, that's everything changed. My attitude, people around me, the people I now have around me and I keep around me. Well, that's huge right there. It is huge because I, I had a lot of toxic people and I, that would feed. And so when it, it was a big, in the last two years, a big life change has happened for me. I've made more money than I've ever made and it's fair money. It's bright money. I'm not cheating anyone out of it. Mm -hmm. I get to help people every day. Um, I get to come home, uh, rescue air works with me and, uh, my situation. So it's great, Roger. I can't explain the gratitude I have for the past like year or so. But that's good because look, look, I, I tell people, if you're enjoying the trade talks, hit that subscribe or follow button, which helps us produce this awesome blue collar content absolutely free. And now back to the episode. You know, number one, hey, and man, there's a, so much you've talked about. I want to <laughs> Yeah, I got to spill the beans on you. <laughs> oh, no, but that's good. I do. And I should have pulled out a pen and just started taking notes. Oh, you're fine. I'm pretty good at math mm -hmm. and people reach out to me all the time and say, look, I'm not good at math, so I can't get into plumbing. It's not, is it? <laughs> no. And I try and tell them, look, I'm lucky. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm pretty good at math. I wasn't in high school. Mm -hmm. I failed algebra. Yeah. Hated it. No, I'm same. But, same. Then, but then when I took introduction to algebra, I started listening and I'm like, wait, I can do the problems in my head. Very critical. I could look at a problem. It'd be like 5X equals this and yada, yada, yada. And, and I just look at it and I know the answer. And she says, well, show me your work. How do you show that? I just, yeah. I'd, she'd say, who knows the answer? I'd raise my hand. She's a Roger, what's the answer? The answer is X equals 23. Come show me how you got it. And I just, I'd go up and write 23 on the board. Yeah. She's like, well, how'd you come to that? I just looked at the problem. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, well, I can't give you credit for that. Wait, I got the answer right. What, what else do you want? So I'm lucky. I'm pretty good at math. I'm a numbers guy. I can see it. And a lot of times people talk numbers and, and like my head's already added them up. Mm -hmm. And they're like, that. they're like, they're reading out numbers to put in a calculator. And by the time they're there, I'm like 843. I'm like, how'd you know that? I wish I had that skill. It'd okay. Very but sometimes, <laughs> yeah. but, but, but then again, there's times if I've been out hanging out till two or three in the morning, but those numbers don't work right. <laughs> Be like 834, I'm like, no, it's like 438. It's like, man, oh, man. hate it when that happens. Yeah, they like savings. So you can get, yeah, there you go. So you can get into plumbing and not be good at math. Oh, 100%. Uh, like, and that's why I always didn't understand about school, right? You couldn't use the calculator. You mm -hmm. had, so well, why can't we use the tools? Like, I get. Teach I, me to use the tool yeah, the right you, way. Yeah, you, I have all these tools. Why, why do I have to use I get confused. I get, and I got to tell you, when I was an instructor in a union, I did not want my kids to use calculators in class. Mm -hmm. I went to them, look, you've got to learn how to convert decimals to fractions and yeah. fractions to decimals. And I wouldn't let them use it, mm -hmm. but I taught them how. Yeah. And it took a while, but it's like, okay, guys, look, think about it this way. Look at this. And I mean, I'm on the board every day. Like, what do I see in my mind? Here's how you do it. Mm -hmm. And Oh, I love the fact you're saying, look, I'm not good at math. I really suck at math. How much does that bother you every day? Does it? <laughs> no. It really doesn't, No, does it? it makes uh, measuring sometimes inconvenient, but uh, I think experience and a little, when am I and yeah, not falling Hold out your it. tongue just right <laughs> yeah, and close your eye yeah, to that right, right of it. Yep, a little experience will go a long way. If you so. want to make it work, you can figure it out. Oh, 100%. 100%. And I think that's also a piece, we're saying like pieces that we're missing. Uh, that problem solving, that's a huge component. Um, residential service, what I specialize in. Analytics are huge. How do you yeah. walk in and analyze a problem? Yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible. There's just so much. And uh, I have a problem taking what I know for granted sometimes. Uh -huh. And it's so much information. It's like, hey, I have a high water bill. And my mind is running a million miles. Oh, yeah. Hour. Like sinks, toilets, angle stops, sh like showers. Faucets is pool autofill, 
Yeah, are they at least? No, no, yeah, no, no. There's 83 things we need to check right now. <laughs> yes. No, I get and it. And so, uh, and my mind's already running through every yeah, single one of them. Yeah, 100. Mm-hmm. percent uh, It's a curse and a blessing at the same you bet. time. You bet. <laughs> Makes me double check a lot. That's for sure. And think about this: How long have you been in plumbing? About four years. I've had guys that have been in plumbing for eight years, ten years, twelve years, and they'll call me, and, and, and I'm like, I'm on the phone. I'm like, okay, have you looked at this? Have you looked at this? Have you looked at this? And they're like, how do you know? When I'm driving down the street, I'm looking, are there any manholes out front? Yeah. Does the sewer come in the front? Sewer going in the back? Because mm-hmm. I'm driving down the street and tell you. Yeah, 100%. And if I see manholes, and I'm looking up at the houses. Where are the cleanouts? Because chances are they're about the same on every house. Because mm-hmm. if I come to this house and they're covered up, well, now I know where to look. Is the meter out front? Is the meter in the back? Do I see meters? Yeah. Are the curbs marked? Is there one line, two lines? Yeah. I agree. They're looking for that blue mark. You bet. The blue yeah. mark or the red mark. Yeah. I, hey, what, what are we looking at? Yeah, sir. And I, but, I mean, as soon as I pull in a neighborhood, I go to work. Yeah. I've literally walked in the houses that other plumbers have gone in and they're like, look, the other plumber told me that it's because of the construction out in the street and this is happening. And I flushed the toilet and it starts making a hammering noise. I said, we need, we need to change your fill now. But the other plumber said, we need to tunnel up under the house, so we need to do this, and something about them working out in the streets affecting it. I know. Yeah. It's your fill valve. It happens a lot. It does. A lot. Meaning the fill valve or other plumbers telling them a gray Both. story. <laughs> Both. Both. So I, I do that, and, and I change his fill valve. Mm-hmm. And it's like, how did you know that? It's like, your fill valve talks to me. Mm-hmm. Your whole house talks to me. Yeah. A lot of plumbers don't see that. So number one, congratulations to you, because it, it's, it's neat. To be able to walk in and say, somebody says, I have a leak, and my mind starts running. Mm-hmm. But one thing I'll tell you to slow down and do, listen to repeat. Oh, 100%. When they're talking to you, make sure you're listening to everyone, because my mind does that. Oh, my mind, I have to write notes and yes. key points of like, Good. Hey, this, this, and so I'll reread it, and i got to focus. It, no, it no, takes I, a lot. Dude, I love that. I love <laughs> it that. It takes a lot. So what made you pick plumbing? The money was thrown at me. I wasn't making the money at the city. Um, and at the time, like I said, I lost everything in Lubbock. I went to the city, $40 an hour, at 10 bucks an hour. I wasn't. This was only four years ago. So wait, 40 an hour or 10 an hour? 10 an hour. Okay. And you were making about 40 an hour a week. Yeah. Okay. 40 hour work week. Uh, no overtime. Okay. Okay. So, 40 hours. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No overtime. Nothing like no chances to. 10 bucks an hour. 10 bucks. 10 bones. Not a lot of money when it's, you know it's not not kind of. But then again, you just sit in your truck all day. Yeah, I was, get, get, like <laughs> we'll pay you. Well, yeah, hey, we'll like, pay you eighty bucks a day just to sit in your truck. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's what you want out of life, right? A lot of dudes. Oh no. Yeah, way. right. Um, but so went on uh, to the apprenticeship and just stuck with it from there. Um, was working crazy hours with Dustin, and there was. Trying to think when I realized when I loved it, because I did it out of necessity for so long, and I was running at such a pace I never sat down to appreciate stuff. It would probably would be to the earlier of this, probably last year of November when I, I helped a uh, elderly man took out a day on my weekend. Uh, Mister Hirsch donated a water heater. I actually went back to that dude's house this year, and I don't get to do favors and never see re- the. Or not reek the rewards, but get to see them out. You bet. It's always you do favors and then you go down the road, right? Right, but you feel good about it. Yeah, you feel good. It, it feels awesome. amazing. It's an amazing feeling. I love some of the jobs. The union used to contact me because I used to be in the union. Mm-hmm. They contact me and say, look, we, we got a customer. They have no money. We don't do service. Yeah. Don't know if you want to do this or not. Like, yeah, I'll do that. Mm-hmm. It's, just, it's, it's just time, you know? And it's, it's changing someone's whole life. That it was an older man. Um, his son and daughter lived in the house with, uh, they were both divorced, so they had four or five young ones under the age of six. Uh, they just had an AC unit put in by us, and they were capped. Like, they didn't have anything. Right. Um, this was, like, still COVID and inflation, and so, like, what they do? No hot water for how long? I mean... Well, I can tell you stories about that. I've had people message me. Yeah. Uh, you talk about five little ones giving them cold baths every night. They don't like that. That's screaming. And now you're talking elderly taking. And so uh, I went for him having a garbage disposal. He had the garbage disposal on hand. 
just started talking and uh, he actually tipped us $400. He's like, hey man, I have this now. I was like, you don't know how much this changed us, our lives. I was like, I got my promotion. I got back on my, it was his son speaking to him. Older man, he was elder. He's like, I got back on my feet. My sister is doing better. And it was like, it was almost like their pivotal chain. I yeah. guess that was like the moment where I started really taking in what I do, right? appreciating what I do, and taking pride in what I do. You bet. Taking it seriously. I think you started, started taking pride in it earlier. Yeah. You know, to, to be a good plumber. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you know, you, you do. You have to say, look, I want to be. Yeah, yeah, I'll get, yeah. So that part's good. But yeah, to get to go in and say, look, I'll donate my time. I, I can spend a day away from the family, whatever it is. Most of us in the trades have done. Yeah, 100%. And, and, and if you hadn't, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> I do, because the, the, the feeling is huge. And, and I go back, you know, I'm an HVAC technician also. Yeah. I took the courses, and I've never done anything with it, so don't ask me to come fix your HVAC at A. man. You would regret it if I did. But I've got, I've got the card. It says I'm a certified HVAC tech. Mm -hmm. And I remember there was an instructor there they called the professor. Mm -hmm. And he came in to teach one day, and, and I'm the oldest guy in the class. There's probably 15, 20 kids in here and me. Mm -hmm. And I say kids. They, they, they weren't all kids. But we had a substitute one day, the professor, because our normal instructor, Tony, had to do something over at Dallas College. And this guy comes in, he says, so, so what are we supposed to talk about today? It's like the boiling point of refrigerants. Yeah, yeah. He says, yeah, I told him to talk to y'all about that next Saturday, because I did Saturday. Mm -hmm. Tony can talk to y'all about that next Saturday. What I'm gonna talk to you about today is there are customers in this world that can afford to pay you what you charge. So you can take care of the people that can't afford to pay you what you charge. I'm looking at him and y'all guys are writing and stuff. I'm like, whoa, 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 <laughs> professor, will you say that again? Yeah. And everybody in here, listen. Yeah. There are people in the world that can afford to pay you what you charge. So you can take care of the people that can't afford to pay you what you charge. I never seen it. And man, it has stuck with me every day since then. Because you know, man, man, I, I love tradespeople. I, I, it's my career, it's my people, it's my tribe. Yeah, yeah. But if you're not giving back some, man, you're just a taker. You can't be a taker in this trade. No. You can't. There's too many, like uh, myself, there's so many people behind me that make my truck possible. And oh, oh, amen. They're like, I had... All the office person, every single person touches that truck and mm -hmm. helps me do my job and be successful for me and my family to help them do what they get to do every day. So it's, it's huge. When I was union, I was union for like 20, 20 something years. Mm -hmm. I remember being in the office one night, I'm at the copy machine, I'm, I'm having some stuff printed up, carry out to my guys. And I hear the ladies in the office across the hall complaining about the plumbers in the field. Mm -hmm. They're a pain to work with. They're needy. They're grumpy. They want something that they always complain that they, they want their insurance fixed right now, you know, whatever it is. And I finished printing it and I'd listened to it for about 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I walked over and I knocked on the door and they said, yeah, right. So I walked in and I said, Hey, look, I, I just want to remind y'all one thing. We get paid for what the plumbers do in the field, mm -hmm. not for what y'all do in the office. What you do in the office, nobody pays us a penny for. Yeah. We get paid for what the guy in the field does each and every day. Mm -hmm. And I just want to make sure y'all understand that. And they looked at me like, yeah. it just shocked them. Mm -hmm. It's like, look, I hate to say it, you're non-productive overhead. <laughs> yeah. But we get paid for what we do out here. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes your salary happen. Yeah. And man, they came up to me later and like, look, I'm sorry, that sounded wrong. I said, no, it was wrong. It's the way y'all look at things. Yeah. You're just a support staff for that guy out in the field that you're complaining about. Yeah. It goes back to that give take. That, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, it, it, it's, it's crazy. It is. It is. It's, uh, and plumbers get that way too. Like it, there's plumbers out there that treat the dispatchers like try, you know, saying God awful. <laughs> oh, no, no, I, 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 I can't I, I probably say on this, 
Uh, but it's it's both ways. So if everyone just can be mutual and everyone can make money and it's a team effort and if everyone's doing their job and everyone stays happy we hit bumps and roads but have you ever spent a day in the dispatcher's office in the call center other than like orientation days um no next time you hear that plumber complaining you might call josh call michael say hey i'm just gonna tell y'all this guy might need to spend a day in the call center. Yeah, a hundred percent. Uh, don't don't want to throw any names out. Don't want to throw anybody under the bus. But I'm just telling you because when you see their job, it's brutal. It's tough. It, it, it is. They're trying to keep every truck running mm-hmm. every single day. But I also think the call center should spend a day riding with you. Yes, seeing what you do because then it's mm-hmm. like, okay, now I know why you need this right now. Mm-hmm. It makes sense. That cross training. You, you so bet. Hey, and, and I do. I think, I think that's huge. Mm-hmm. So your apprenticeship, you, you messed up a lot. Did a lot good, but. I believe that. I, um, I do. You're a very good plumber. Okay. And, and I do. I, I, I've been around you. I've, I've been in the field with you. Mm-hmm. I, I love your attitude. And, and I love that you're like, look, man, really, I just I grew up a year ago. We all make a lot of mistakes. And, and that's why I told my son, like, d- d- don't start here. Yeah. You want to end up here. Yes. Okay. Can you imagine getting fired from rescue in the very beginning and then getting out and making mistakes at other jobs and then waking up one day and think, wait, I want to be a great plumber. Wow. Look at the opportunity, the bridge I burned. Yes. How bad would that be? I don't burn bridges. I was working at Levy and Son for, that's where I did my apprenticeship. Mm-hmm. And even then, uh, we had our disagreements, but in the end, gave my two weeks notice, told the manager, everything said, Hey, no hard feelings. Uh, one day I would hope that if I was in the spot and I would want to come back, that we were in a good place so where I could get hired back. Um, Cause there are people that burn bridges, man. And you, that's a terrible way to go about this business mm-hmm. because rescue here may not been the position that I was looking for. Right. I may have bounced around. But if I treated that, like I treated my grandfather's job when I was you 20, bet. you bet. Josh wouldn't let me through those uh-huh. doors again. Uh, he would have given, he was, People around those uh, coaching groups, like they talk and every all those owners oh, yeah. get together. And yeah, you could go to another city and say, I'm going to go to work for this company. They're going to be like, no, you're not. No, and word of mouth talk. Yeah, and, and it, it's if, huge. If you leave the office in a bad way, then people leave. There's a big high turnover rate in plumbers. And I think the owners get that. And so. Yeah, you, know, you say that, but when we get a good plumber mm-hmm. at Rescue Air, they don't turn over a lot, do they? No, we stay. It's it's a great it's a great place to work. We stay, uh, and, and, and I know this. And, and look, I, I love Dustin, mm-hmm. but I know Dustin's tried recruiting plumbers that we have. Mm-hmm. Probably you too, which is yep. fine. I, I get it. it. Everybody recruits. We, yep. we we got to. It's how we grow our business. If you've got a plumber, and I had somebody message me, if you, if I've got a plumber, how do I keep him from leaving for two two more dollars an hour? I heard that. Yeah. You treat him right. Mm-hmm. You train him. You educate him. You give him whatever he wants. And I don't mean just, look, how much money do you want? You want a million dollars? Here's a million dollars. You give him the opportunity to learn whatever he wants to learn to make him the best freaking plumber out there ever was. Yeah, 100%. And I don't care if you give me $5 an hour more. I ain't leaving. It's ten grand a year. I'm, I'll make that yeah. by learning something new. We'll do a side job. Or it, it, well, I don't know about a side oh, job. No. You know. Yeah, no side work. You know, I don't like <laughs> side work. I, and you know, it's funny because I had call message me yesterday. I said, if I were installing a water heater on the side, what would you charge? I said, I wouldn't. I said, it's not worth it to me. I don't have insurance. I don't have it. I said, if you install that and something goes bad and you don't have insurance, it's going to cost you the rest of your life. Yeah, it's your whole life. And he's like, gone. dude, I never thought of that. I didn't do side work. I worked for my family yeah 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 i don't even knew that uh, yeah well, <laughs> it's causes, it's well unfortunately they knew i was a plumber uh uh-huh. <laughs> i moved away from my family there so you I'm, go I'm there, there you go like, oh moms yeah i'd love to but dad yeah that's a six hour away. drive yeah, yeah. yeah 10 hours away i can hear your house is what man man i'll tell you who to call though <laughs> great plumbers down the street absolutely somewhere along the way and, and i like the way you said it i had i don't even remember when i fell in love with it i was at a conference the other day uh, for social media, for, for analytics, for stuff like that. And I'm talking to a guy who's a great guy. I had seen him a few months before at a social media conference and we're talking and I said something and, and, you know, somewhere along the way, it's like, Oh God, man, I love, like freaking love it. And turn, I walk off and there's somebody else there and they turn to look at him and says, 
do you think he really loves plumbing? So, oh my God, if you heard him talk, mm -hmm. I love it. I get excited about it. You know, we're walking through the house right now. I'm like, look, he used to do a remodel yeah. here. He gets to change this, get to change this and do this. Building the training center and yeah, teach yeah. plumbers. And that, that's my passion. I want to teach plumbers how to do mm -hmm. things that make them better. You know, I remember I was still a helper. When, didn't even call it an apprentice back then. I'm driving to work. I'm driving down Broadway in Garland. And I'm headed to these apartments. Mm -hmm. And again, working with one of the best plumbers yeah. I've ever known. And on the way, I mean, Tyler's like, I'm driving down the road. And all of a sudden it was like, now I know why. Now I know what we're doing. Now I know why we do it. Now I'm, it makes sense mm -hmm. now. And it was that quick. It was like a light switch went off. And all of a sudden I'm like, I understand I'm plumbing. And I went in that day. And he says, Roger, why don't you grab the, the conduit and the port of band, cut, cut us some more stakes. And I said, hey, do you, do you mind if I go over and start topping out that next building? He said, do you think you're ready? I said, yeah. Then go. And I did. Mm -hmm. This is a trade you can fall in love with. A hundred percent. And I call it a trade. I'm always trying to call it a profession. We've got a professional license in our pocket. We work very hard for what we have in our pocket. It, it's huge. And, and here's what I like about talking to you. Most people in, in, with most professional licenses in their pocket. If you're in Texas and you do plumbing, electrical, or HVAC, you, you've got to be licensed. Mm -hmm. Most people that get a license stop learning the day they get their license. Mm -hmm. I'm a tradesman. I'm a journeyman. I'm, I'm a whatever. Just let me go plumb now. Now I can go make money. And they stop learning. Now you walked into Rescuer and Rescuer probably teaches a lot different than any other company you've been at. Oh, hundred percent. That was the first, like, cause I went to Levy and son, I was probably there for three months before COVID hit. And so pretty, my whole apprenticeship was through COVID. There was no training. Um, we weren't allowed in the office for a year. Um, so my training was Dustin. That's all I knew as training. Um, I didn't know there was even plumbing training that it was even offered. It's a trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. Like, they used to tell me stories, oh, we'd have reps come in and teach us tanklesses and teach us pumps and new products, and I missed out on all of that. I was just, here, here's how to fix stuff. How many days of training do you think you've had since you've been at Rescuer? At least a month, month and a half, two months worth. 30, 45 yeah. days yeah. of training in two years? Yeah. I'd consider a month a year. It'd yeah. probably be a good... A month per year? Mm hmm And, and I, I had Randy yeah. in here the other day. Randy said we spend about $10,000 a year per person mm -hmm. on training. 100%. Does that make you a better plumber? Yes. Does it make you a better person? Yes, that's all you go. It makes better both. Uh, better conversations I have with people, better products I offer. Everything I do is better. Taking uh, bits and pieces of ever, all the, everyone's knowledge, that's what I like doing. I like taking a bunch of knowledge and seeing what works for me. Um, and that's what those, all these training, uh, we're with 50 people, 60 people. Um, and I'm getting sick people with 50 years experience, people with one year experience, people where I'm at different levels of everybody. And you're just picking minds of people all over the country. Very crucial. And is can highly contributed to what I do at rescue air and plumbing hundred percent. Does it help you make more money? Absolutely. Absolutely. I went, um, I doubled in two years. So, yes. <laughs> okay, so you doubled in two years. Mm -hmm. So what's the best year you've ever had in plumbing? This year. Um, I'm at 1.1 million. Okay, 1.1 in sales. Mm -hmm. That's not income, so don't no, freak no, out yet. Not in income. I, I wish. No, not in income. But that means you're probably making a couple hundred grand this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fair to say. 100%. Now, you went to college, so I, I, can't, I can't say you didn't even go to college. You did, but you're not doing what you went to college for. No, I never would have thought I'd be in the position I'm in now. Wow. In a million years. It's the best blessing that I've had uh, in my life yet. Yeah, I'm not going to say ever, but to this day. And, and I remember you almost left once. I almost left a couple of times. Well, you almost left in the beginning because me and you talked about it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm like, dude, look. Take it out. This is going to be good. Mm-hmm. We're still learning how to be a plumbing company. Yeah. I, I sold Rescue Air. I mean, sold Texas Green Plumbing mm -hmm. to Rescue Air. You came in about a year later, mm -hmm. and we had gone through 
you were here during the bad managers. We had a bad management period. Yes, and we'll just leave it at that. And you said, I'm leaving. I can't. It was like a weekend. Oh, no, I, I get it. Less than that. I get I like, it. Like, I'm done. And, and, and I'm like, dude, listen to me. I hear your, I hear your pain. Mm -hmm. And I promise you, this is being addressed. It's being looked at. Mm -hmm. You're not just talking to, you're not, you're not, this is not falling on deaf ears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you glad you stayed? I, I'm so glad. I <laughs> <laughs> so glad. Um, it's, it's been growing, growing pains. Um, and that's just a part of being a part of this organization. This plumbing department has doubled and now tripled over since I've been there. When I got there, there's two of us, three of us, two apprentices. And now we're at 12 plumbers and like eight apprentices, uh -huh. 15 trucks. So it's, uh, it's awesome to be a part of, and I am glad you caught me a stay. <laughs> Man, I know, and I am too, because I've always loved your attitude, mm -hmm. okay? I appreciate it. And, you, and you're just, you're honest. You're like, hey, I don't like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. What I, don't you like? Yeah. Okay, I hear your problems. Let me see. These problems are being addressed right now. You don't, you don't even know it. You don't mm -hmm. see it. I'm glad you stayed too. <laughs> yeah. But I bet your wife's really glad too. Yes, she is, because it. The alternative of that at the time was, I don't know what it was. Just another plumbing company. Another plumbing company. Bounce, goes, bounce, bounce, bounce. I turned to one, one of those guys, and I, I didn't want to be, I wanted to find a home. Mm -hmm. uh, that was my main mission when I went job searching, and slowly come to find out there's a lot of empty promises made when you start going to interviews, get there for a week or two, and stuff that was said was never fulfilled or or you get there long enough to realize look they were filling me full of it because mm -hmm. these people ain't getting trained yeah you know and that's part of what i teach one of my programs is, is getting into the trades and one of the things is the interview process when they get done and, and it's time for you and they, and they say hey do you have any questions for us yeah how does me coming to work here make me better because i want to be a great plumber yeah how does coming to work here educate me to help me become that great plumber. And I want to be a great plumber for you. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But how does what you offer make me better? And I don't think many people ask that question. Mm -mm. That's a good question. And, and, and I think it's a great question because it's like, look, I'm going to come here and make you money. Yeah. Okay. Because I promise you, it, at 1.1 million, you made rescue air money. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you also made yourself really good money too. Mm -hmm. And you didn't have to worry about the advertising, the marketing, making your phone. You just show up oh, and be yeah. you every day. Yep. And, and that, that's a great thing. Because mm -hmm. once you're that owner, it's, man, the, the, it's the a big responsibility. Dude, it's, it's tough. It I, is. I don't think a lot of people see. I, I don't know if I would ever take that role on. Um, my well, wife. you know, if, if you're making 200 grand a year, why? It's like there are millionaires at companies that, mm -hmm. that, that aren't even the owner of the company. Mm -hmm. 200 million a year, I mean, 200,000 a year. It doesn't take you long to put up enough money to say, look, I'm a millionaire now. Yeah. I've got it, it in the savings. I've got it in the bank. I've got it in investments, whatever it is. Yeah, 100%. It's not bad. No. I mean, your wife makes good money. She makes really good money. You make good money. Mm -hmm. and, and, and look, this is just me thinking outside the box because I used to teach this to the apprentices. Mm -hmm. You could put up $100,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Okay? Put up $100,000 a year. Not make, put up, put away, yeah. invest. We, yeah, we have this year. This is our first year that we were able to. Isn't that freaking amazing to look it at the is. bank and say, wait, we got a hundred grand in the bank. I'm telling you from this year to last year, last year we were struggling to make our payments like food. Like we were eating chicken because it was cheap. I don't think people see me now. And I heard this from Josh the other day. Everyone sees overnight 10 year success. It takes 10 years for overnight. Or I might have butchered. No, no, right I mean, yeah, but it takes about 10 years to become an overnight yeah, success. And you get yep. there and you're like, I'm here. And everyone's like, it's always yeah. great for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's always been great. And that now it's like, dude, I worked late nights, dude, 24 hours, 48 hours at a time. Like went through the weeds with that bad manager. Like I've, I've done my do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've done my bit. You bet. Now we're get to do fun stuff. My wife bought a car this year, the first new car. We put that money in the bank. We're thinking about buying land next year. Like our whole lives have changed. and. Plumbing was there for the past few years, but I didn't treat it like the way I should. 
it's not like dedicate your life to, you know, but. Yeah, you don't live, breathe, eat, and sleep plumbing, no, do you? No, You've got a life outside mm -hmm. of it. And people ask me all the time about a work-life balance. And I tell them, like, there really isn't one. Mm -hmm. You've just got to make use of the time that you get off and enjoy the heck out of it. Yeah, 100%. It, it's a good way to put it, isn't it? Yeah, because uh, your days are not, you don't get home at five like most families. Not every day? No, not every day. Pretty much every day you work, don't make plans. I learned that the hard way. Dustin said, you make a plan for Friday night or that's the night we're going to be working. Like, you bet. And sure enough, me and my wife made a movie date we, it was going to be at 10 o'clock and night. I was like, surely. What? Surely I'll be home by then. Yeah, we sold a 100-foot gas um, yard really? service uh -huh. uh, on Friday at 5, and we knocked it out that night. So I did not make the 10 o'clock dinner. <laughs> I got home around 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning, but we called emergency inspection, and she had gas. Um, isn't, isn't that phenomenal? And there's a lot of plumbers that just say, yeah, you won't get gas for three days. Mm -hmm. I've never done that. If I, oh, no, we're doing this today. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get you taken care of. Yeah. A lot of plumbers are like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going above and beyond like that. No, sometimes it takes two, three weeks to get people gas. And I, that is... Unfreaking acceptable. Unacceptable. No, it is. It's like we, we are a premium service. We are premium. Like, you get gas now. Like, whatever it takes in my power, I don't... Whatever I had going on, I don't got going on anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. You were my priority. No, no, I, and, and, I, and I love that. I, I speak to a lot of real estate and brokers and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And I was speaking at Rogers Healy's here one day. And his dad spoke after me. And his dad's a financial investor, financial advisor, something like that. And, and I spoke. And Rogers said, man, you, you can leave. I said, no, I'd, I'd like to go ahead and hang around here, your dad. And he's talking about explaining the circle of, of investments and life mm -hmm. and, and how it all works. And he stopped and like, he said, the one thing I can give you advice on is fall in love with your customers and you'll never treat them wrong. You've got to think about, and, and I can tell already by the way you talk, you mm -hmm. do, these customers that you meet every day, they're paying for your livelihood. Mm -hmm. they, pay oh, for, they pay for your wife's car. Yeah. They pay for your date night if you ever get to have it. <laughs> when that night comes around. When that <laughs> finally comes around, they pay for everything you do. Mm -hmm. For a lot of people. Yeah. For a lot of yeah, the office people that yeah. hate working with the plumbers and hate talking mm -hmm. to them, they're yeah. paying for their livelihood too. Yeah, pay for a lot of people's livelihood. It's people huge, isn't it? Yeah, people don't, and people don't see like we don't get to eat if we don't. We're not on the road. Uh, yeah. So it's everyone, our customer is everything. So when it snows and ices and freezes, I was watching a video the other day. Uh, we were out there. Can you imagine being that like that? Like, yeah, I'm just going to stay home and relax for a week. No, I, that's There's not. There's people out there that don't have water. Mm -hmm. Their life is totally jacked up. Me and Dustin worked some crazy, crazy out. Oh, yeah. And we were in that big old leaving in some box van that had no traction. Yeah, yeah, yeah going yeah, at a road side right, to yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, I you get it. You're in uh, I, Tokyo Drift, but you're really just uh, in Yeah, 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 you're January. really just in Dallas. You're a plumber. <laughs> yeah, I'm plumber. Not a race car plumber. Plumber. <laughs> I know, I know. I've been there. What's your favorite thing about plumbing? Meeting new people every day. The relationships I build. Do you consider yourself an extrovert or an introvert? Introvert trying to be an extrovert. <laughs> yeah, and, and no, it's funny because as soon as you said meeting new people, I thought, wow, wait, I've always pictured you as an introvert. I am. I am. Uh, but, but your favorite thing is meeting new people. Yes. I have, it has to be my favorite thing, right? Because if it's not, I'm introverted. I'll, I'll never get to meet you. You'll, you'll, you'll never be an extrovert, okay? No. But you can be an introvert with extroverted ways. Yes. Okay? It's the one I, I no, it's the one out of every 10 people I meet. That one customer that loves you. You love them. You click. Everything goes well. Um, even when it doesn't go well, you're with them. They call you when they need you. Um, they don't treat you like the help, right? The help goes through the back. You bet. Meeting people that treat you back with the same respect because it's such, you don't get it anymore. And when you give it to other people, it is at the same reciprocity. It's, and if you don't get it back, then that whole, my whole demeanor changes. It's, mm -hmm. I don't want to be here. Like, just, you right. I don't want to hear what I have to say. Like, I don't care about his, he doesn't care about his problem, plumbing problem, why should I? My mm -hmm. whole attitude changes. And that's that, that was kind of that earlier putting positive people around me. And, and I kind of, at this point, kind of associate kind of that. And I need to disassociate um, my customers from like 
people I meet in the town, you know. You bet. But uh, I'm working on it. It's a it's a work in progress. No, it is. Sure. You're doing good because I did. I loved hearing that because I'm like, wow, you know, I always pictured you as an introvert. Mm-hmm. But don't get me wrong. When when you're around the plumbers, you 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 talk to everybody and all that. And and really, man, the big difference in introverts and extroverts. When introverts are around people, it it pulls the energy out of them. Mm-hmm. Okay. When extroverts are around people, they get supercharged. And, and that's me. There's speakers that walk on a stage and talk to an audience of 10,000. Mm-hmm. And then they've got to go crawl in bed and cover up with a blanket because the energy is completely drained out of them. Mm-hmm. Me, I talk to an audience of 10,000. I'm like, dude, let's go to a bar and have a party and hang out and visit. And yeah. I'm not ready for bed. Let's, yeah, let's yeah. stay up all night and talk about it. So I love the fact that you're like, look, I can still talk to people and build connections because mm-hmm. it is, it's huge. Mm-hmm. Well, you're right. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm drained. I'm yeah. done. I'm, I get, I kind of feel my wife gets the tired, tired. She's talking. I'm just, I got nothing left in me. I've been talking all day. Talk to friends, people, following, I'm done. <laughs> That, right on then spot. have your wife study introverts yeah, and extroverts yeah, and it'll yeah, make yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. Because she's a cosmetologist. She's probably an extrovert. Uh, no, not cosmetologist. Oh, space she was. No, space planning specialist. Oh. Uh, so she does construction documents for. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for, CDs are tough. Yeah. Uh, but for like. Uh, kind of I even, thought she was a hairstylist. Okay. She owns spe- space planning specialist. Um, so. Uh, Very interesting. Brokers, realtors. Uh, she helps people design their spaces and. Does everything for the contractor. She does plumbing, electrical, all that stuff. She sends it to the engineer to get stamped, but uh, she makes the CDs. I love that. So we kind of kind of go hand in hand. She asks me plumbing questions, and uh, I get a set of plans. I'm like, hey, here's what I do. <laughs> and yeah. What does this mean? <laughs> Absolutely. So it works out. That is so cool. When you bring new apprentices in, or when they assign a new apprentice to you, mm-hmm. what are the first few things you tell them? Channel locks, pen. <laughs> The tools that they need. Uh, I've always got a pen. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, locks, it's a pair of pen. Um, that's really all you need. Pay attention. The first kind of first month or two is say, pay attention. See, but I grab. Um, you're making material lists for me, so you can learn parts. Like it's just a transition period. Can't scare them too quickly. Yeah, you can't just throw them in a, a tunnel and say, "Here you go, bud." There you go. Get, uh, get in there and cut all that. Yeah, out. cut all that out, and then let me know how it goes. Yeah. You'll scare them that. Right, Wouldn't so. mean any good. Well, they cut it right up against the slab. <laughs> yeah, be like, wait, no, I have not this out to do. Yeah. Yeah, not good. Yeah. I have a, my apprentice now is really my first apprentice that I've had for a full time um, that I've actually, like, trained for a full time. I had Kyle for a little bit, but I... Jackpot. I just, yeah, Kyle was, Kyle was good, but I was a plumber that they stuck the new apprentices with for two months to teach them. That was like, hey, these, this is what you have to know. And then they would take them off my truck, and I'd get the next green guy. So I got real good at that two months. Teaching them the basics. Yeah, teaching that. them basics. And then they would take them away. I'm like, man, as soon as they start, like, figuring stuff out, uh-huh. they're gone. But um, now how long did you have Kyle? Two or three months. Okay. Two or three months. But he was trained by Josh for very well. And so when I, he, he was pretty, had every, everything down at the point. Um, he was not green by any means. No. No. No, he's good. I like that. Yeah, it's very good. And he understands slab leaks and leak detection, too, mm-hmm. and that helps a lot. Yeah, I, we did a couple together. Uh, we had a couple of late nights together, for sure. <laughs> good. One last question here. Number, number one, th- this has been fantastic. Uh, I've really absolutely. enjoyed this. Yeah, absolutely. If you could go back to the day that little Tyler, I almost want to say walked out, of, walked out the door the, the day after he graduated mm-hmm. high school, headed for his first job, what would you tell him now, based on what you know? First, be on time to everything. That's huge. It is. <laughs> I didn't learn that deal later on. But don't get so down on yourself. I took a lot of stuff to heart. Um, I was a good person, and I didn't feel that when I was younger. So not be so hard on yourself. Uh, keep going, and everything turns out good, man. Everything turns out with, uh, in the end, turns out really good. So. You're still a good person. Yeah, <laughs> I know it you now. <laughs> know it now. But I, I battled that for most of my life. I, th- so. I think a lot of us do. Uh, I, I think, think a lot so of us too. are put in a position where we're, we're not given the ability to, to stand up and shine. No. And uh took me a long time. So if there's anyone out there, 
takes a lot, but um, it gets better. Um, if you're into anything, plumbing's there. There's so many opportunities in the trades. If you're stuck, you're in that business position, you're in any position. Uh, there's jobs out there and there's companies out there like Rescue Air here to make. Change your life, essentially. People like me and you, Roger, change your lives, kissing babies. We're trying, brother. We are trying. <laughs> so, Tyler, this has been fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much. No, thank you, sir. Right. Awesome.